Hello and welcome back to this National University's Esports League tournament. We're in the lower bracket final and we see here Imperial facing off against Manchester. What do you think is going to go down here, Excoundrel? <laughs> well, we've seen these team teams play before. I think it was in the first round of the tournament. I uh, know actually no, Manchester versus Cardiff was the first round. It was in the second round of the tournament. And uh, Manchester came out victorious. So this is a bit of a grudge rematch for Imperial. I think they want to get a bit of revenge. Manchester obviously wanting to go and get a bit of revenge against ACOG, who they just were beaten by. So we'll see how this pans out. Imperial have been looking strong, however. So ever since they lost to Manchester, they have been coming back with a vengeance. Really, really looking to turn the screws in the games that they've been playing. They were in a very tight game against Warwick just then, but they did manage to win out. Um, again, I think it was a good Lissandra play coming out from uh, Imperial when I saw. Um, thinking about the bands right now, uh, we've just seen quick flurry of bands. Uh, what do you think about them? Well, Zach, we have seen either played or banned in basically every game that we've casted. Um, he's so good for his AoE crowd control late game. Um, his let's bounce, the elastic slingshot, just getting in there, getting him in the middle of the fight. Uh, Vayne and Thresh, also a bot lane combination, we've seen banned out a lot. Vayne is very good if you can get her into that late game, and Thresh, just a lot of CC on a, on a support, and a lot of ability just to get in and out of team fights and to save your AD carry if they get into a bit of a bad situation. Um, the other three bands, Lissandra has been played so well when she's been played in this tournament, so I, I understand banning her out, especially against Manchester, because she was played in that last game and she did so well. Uh, the Jarvan been picked basically in every game as well. Really good jungler, really good counter jungler, very good at 1v1ing, and also his early ganks with that Demacian standard into Dragon Strike are just, they're so on point, and if you can land that, get a flash, and then come back in a couple of minutes, you're just able to get kills over and over again. The Elise ban, we've seen her ban quite a lot, I think I've only seen her played once in this tournament, but she is very good at sticking on an AD carry or an AP carry, just in that back line, using her Neurotoxin and her Volatile Spiderlings, just switching between the two forms, able to get a lot of damage down really quickly, because she does that percentage health damage rather than just a, an ability power scaling damage. Yeah, and obviously Vayne has been a very decent pick this tournament. The only time I've seen Vayne lose was in the game that we casted first today, uh, where she was shut down into that mid game, although she did have that really big early advantage. If they'd played that right, Vayne would have snowballed pretty hard. I saw uh, Imperial play Irelia, but they haven't locked it in. Um, they have locked in, however, a Yi, and that is a Jarvan ban as well. So we've seen Jarvan played in almost every match. Uh, this tournament, but Yi with Teleport, it's not the first time I've seen that played uh, this tournament, obviously Teleport becoming more and more popular on the jungle junglers for these crazy Teleport ganks and they can pull off, and obviously Yi needs the kills um, to get himself snowballed, he can snowball very hard, he's a bit like uh, Aatrox, he's a bit like Trindomir, he hits heavy with his auto attacks, and it looks like they're going to lock in a Varus and a Janna lane. We have seen this lane previously and it did very well. Yeah, I mean, Varus and Janna, Varus just has that with his Blight Quiver, he has that percentage health damage as well. Janna being able to put the shield on, giving her uh, some, giving the AD carry some extra attack damage and that uh, the barrier to stop off the damage from the uh, Tristana on the other side. Be interesting to see whether he decides to level up his Piercing Arrow or the Hail of Arrows because. I would suggest the Piercing Arrow versus uh, Tristana, just because she can get out of range quite quickly. But Hail of Arrows used to be really popular, has fallen a little bit out of favour, but some AD carries still like to run it as their main go-to spell. Yeah, and we look like we have a uh, Malphite top lane, and they are picking out a Zyra. Now Zyra, obviously, we haven't seen her in the mid lane as of yet. She has been used in that support position and I have a feeling when I've seen Manchester play Zyra, they were very good with the Stranglethorns. I think this is when I cast the game in Manchester there. Zyra support actually ended up going 5 for 1 and actually proving prove to be quite a formidable threat into the mid game with all of her AP. She actually ended up building a little bit AP after her health. Uh, Irelia and Lux being picked up for Imperial. I did see uh, Irelia played for Imperial fairly recently. They did well. We have seen Irelia used to great effect in this tournament, although she hasn't been popular in the LCS or in normal play. Um, Irelia obviously very good at sticking to her targets, especially ones with those with escape. She was very, very good at sticking to 
that Tristana if needs be. However, if Zyra is the support of choice, Zyra will be doing a good job of protecting with her grasping roots and her strangle thorns. Uh, Lee Sin has been picked up in the jungle. He is a very good counter jungler. He could be used to a great effect against the Yi. Yi has now swapped out that teleport to a ghost and Malphite has actually picked up the teleport himself so maybe this will be a standard sort of Lee jungle that we're going to see here. Oriana however has been locked in they don't want to give over Oriana to the um, Manchester team because obviously Malphite ultimate and stubble force is a great ball delivery system. Yeah I mean the, the Lee is someone we haven't seen that commonly in um this tournament, but if you can get those mechanics down, you can just be in and out of team fights. You can be baiting skill shots, especially against a not heavy skill shot team. But if the um, Zyra tries to use her strangle thorns on you and you're just jumping around trying to get out of it, it's a lot easier for you to escape. I mean, they have got quite good disengage, the blue team here. They've got the Janna with those howling girls and with those monsoons. It really is able to blade surge away Oriana if she uses her command dissonant, she speeds up her entire team. Varus with the chain of corruption, which can be used either as an engage or a disengage, and uh, Lee Sin just able to jump in and out of fights with that safeguard and that sonic wave. It'll be interesting to see how they actually decide to engage fights, because I think it will be a Lee Sonic Wave into an Oriana Ball, the ball delivery system, as you were saying. But that's really one of their only forms of engaging fights. The other one is using the Varus just to get that chain of corruption, but that's the most missed skill shot in the game, and we all know that. So it's very dangerous <laughs> for them to, if they don't get that combination off with the Shock Wave or with the uh, uh, Sonic Wave, sorry, uh, into the Shock Wave, or with the uh, safeguard into the, the uh, shockwave, it'll be interesting to see if they're able to actually engage fights. We see a Zerath picked up on really... the team. Zerath just really, really good range. Like He's just very good at hitting people from long, long distances with that locus of power. Uh, with the Zyra also, he can use his uh, Arcano Pulse just to be able to do a lot of AoE damage. Malphite coming in with his Unstoppable Force. Tristana, you can start jumping into teamfights at that stage because everyone's low. You can get your resets, use a rocket jump, and Yi also with the resets. That's going to be a really... If they get a kill, that team is just going to snowball the fight from there. Yeah, and Irelia also has Blade Surge, so she can also... Um offer an ability to position herself for the Oriana ball, however not as effective as the Lee Sin Sonic Wave she does. Once she's used it, it has a shorter range, she cannot use it again, so that's a one shot at positioning. They have now loaded into gain, so you now can look at talking about what we expect to see here. Zerath, I don't haven't seen a Zerath this tournament. Um, I'm not sure how good he is against the Oriana. He was previously hovering over Castin. Castin does do well against the Oriana post six. However, pre six, Oriana can bash, bash him out of lane. She has that ability to bash most melee players out of lane with the command attack and command dissonance being quite a devastating combination when you're early on. Li has actually gone into game with that teleport, and it does look like uh, Malphite has gone in with exhaust so maybe he just wants that exhaust against the irelia uh zyra has gone in with a ignite so they're not looking to get any exhaust down in bot lane they are looking for a kill lane right there and why don't they blame them i don't blame them sorry so zyra with that uh strangle thorns uh and uh Tristana being very good at levels 1 to 3, um, they can do a bit of a cheesy all-in here. Uh, they could sort of t look to pick up some early kills, but with the Janna, like we've seen before, sometimes Tristana relies on the dot from her explosive shot to finish off the kill. Janna has got her shield, Varus has got barrier. Those are two very effective means at blocking out damage over time abilities, like the Tristana explosive shot, like Ignite. I don't know how this is going to play out. I've never seen Tristana used in a lane swap. She's not particularly much of an auto-attacking lane bully. I don't expect Manchester to try a lane swap here either. Um, with the Yi in the jungle, I'm thinking that they're going to... I think they've learnt from their mistakes. Uh, I don't know about you, but they, they, I, they're not running these two tank combos anymore that I have seen from a lot of teams. They're running with this Malphite, who I think will be taking the most of the tanking ability. Yi was, is useless if he builds tank. He has to build damage, and he's going to be one of those junglers that has to snowball out of control, get a couple of kills, but hopefully provide a few kills to his lanes as well. I'm just hoping that Manchester look to snowball every lane that they can. And with the yeah. Yi with teleport, it's going to be some pretty good ganks. However, they do not have that Malphite with teleport, and Malphite with teleport into an unstoppable force is a brilliant way to turn a team fight. So... It's going to be interesting to see how this goes. Zerath, with his 
it, with his lane against Oriana, he has the range, so he can outrange her. However, Zeref has these longish cooldowns on his abilities. He has his Arcano Pulse, which is... Um, Sorry, what is it? Uh, no, he has his uh, Arcane Barrage, which has three uh, three skill shots in quick succession, which can be used to burst down most champions. However, he's not one of these champions that has a 100% to 0% uh, burst without being significantly ahead. He's going to look to poke the Orianna out of lane, but Orianna does have that command protect, and the charge up time for the Arcana Pulse is pretty big. So Oriana can look to protect herself from a, a bit of the damage. She will mitigate some of that with her uh, command protect if she is quick off the mark. And we have seen Irelia versus uh, Malphite a couple of times, and Irelia does often win out this lane. So we'll see how this plays out. We are loading into game now. Are you expecting to see anything from the level one here? I don't really think anything's going to happen level one. I mean, Lee Sin might go and try and counter jungle the red of the other team, but I think Master Yi, really, you need the blue just to... Uh start off your, your jungling to get those alpha strikes just to be able to use them uh, regularly otherwise you run out of mana really quickly um, there's, there's no real CC heavy on either side, like you've got the, the roots from um, from Zyra which could root a few people in place Zerath doesn't really have a stun at level 1 either, Malphite's got the seismic shard, Tristana's got rocket jump, like there's no real hard hard CC from either team so I don't really see anything happening at level 1. All I could see is perhaps Lee Sin trying to do a sneaky red buff steal, perhaps after he's taken his own blue. Yeah, and I would expect Lee Sin to try and invade this Master Yi, especially as he doesn't have flash, he only has teleport. That should be an easy kill, and it'll be interesting to see whether Lee Sin starts his red and runs straight to Master Yi's red, because this does actually happen. Um, I do see it quite a lot in solo queue. Master Yi, Lee Sin's will start their red, and because they're energy dependent, do not rely on that blue buff, will run into the opposing enemy's red buff, and they won't be expecting it, and go and try and take that red buff away. But, good warding will prevent this, and I hope that uh, Manchester know this and will try and ward up their red buff as best they can. I have seen this Zyra start complete wards so she doesn't often start with a fairy charm she sometimes usually starts with full wards and gets some good vision for manchester so we'll have to see how that plays out and hopefully he'll play to the same standard that i saw him play last time and uh, go get some good amount of kills because even though the zyra picked up all the kills in that lane she did a good job of carrying her team through their mid game with some brilliant building into ap doing a lot of damage through her grasping roots and strangle thorns and her and her uh, plants actually did a deceptive amount of damage Mm -hmm. Skin War has been won by uh, Imperial, however, and that is also very important, and obviously in determining who's actually going to win. Yeah, more I mean, skins, skin more war, skill. Skin War exactly. is the end of the game, really. Um, I think the problem for us in this loading screen, really, is that uh, Zareth has forgotten to feed the hamsters that uh, load up his computer for him, so we're just waiting on him to load in. He must be playing on his uh, Nintendo DS or something. Um, while we wait for that, which team do you think are going to be uh, sort of better in a 5v5 fight? A 5v5 fight here, I think I'm going to have to give it over to um, Manchester, really. Combining that um, ultimate um, unstoppable force with the Strangle Thorns, with the uh, AoE of the Arcane Barrage, into a Yi Alpha Strike, I think they just have the better AoE comp right here. I don't know if uh, Imperial have really thought about having a tanky front line for that Orianna Command Shockwave. So, but like I said before, it, often in these games are won and lost in the lanes. If you can get ahead in lanes, it doesn't matter how your team comp uh, works up. You can still be absolutely, you can do still be, you know, absolutely brilliant in team fights, mm -hmm. even though if you might have the slightly less uh, potent team fight combination. But it does look like uh, Imperial are possibly looking for a red invade or trying to catch out people at their blue. It looks like they're sneaking past. Zerath hasn't seen this. Yeah, so this is quite a good sneak in, but it looks like um, Manchester are actually going to try and go for the Red Invade for themselves. They're out there trying to see if they went through. Um, I'm not sure if he had vision. I don't think he did. There aren't any fervent pings going down, uh, and it looks like no. he's just going to go towards his own blue. So they haven't Manchester seen this. Have... If they can steal this away, that would be a really good start for this Lee Sin. Yeah, Manchester have placed a pretty odd ward sort of around the Wraith area. This Zyra has started complete wards, like I saw her start last time. She's opted not to pick out that uh, Fairy Charm or that Rejuvenation Bead. And now Master Yi is starting blue. But this is a going to be a possibly free red buff for... Uh, a possibly free red buff for uh, Imperial. But Master Lee Sin has gone back to try and pick up his own. 
is Irelia going to try and take this red buff away from Master Yi? Thus There's giving another two really red buffs. interesting ward going out there by Janna. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Irelia is going to steal this. Uh, Janna actually placed a ward that missed the bush as well on her own side. So, lots of interesting wards. Irelia getting this red buff is going to give her such an advantage over this Malphite in lane. Just push her so far ahead. And if Malphite is, um, just has to try and 1v1 this Irelia and doesn't get any help from his Yi, then that's just going to be really difficult for him because that red buff is just going to do so much damage over time. Yeah, and now Yi has been denied his red buff, and unfortunately, Yi doesn't have any inherent uh, CC abilities that come along with his kit, so he doesn't have anything that can slow down the opposition, and therefore the red buff, is, he kind of relies on it to get early kills. Irelia, having picked that up, can really look to bully out this uh, Malphite early on, and that's what she needs. Once she level starts leveling up that heat and style, she gets a bit of a bonus to her... Um, to her... Uh, her, uh, power spikes and Amalfa hasn't got a ward and Lee Sin looks like he's uh, coming around the back for a game. In, yeah, it looks like Lee Sin might just be trying to land a sonic wave. Lands a sonic wave, goes straight in. Flash out there, Ignite's gone down as well. So that's a summoner for a summoner, but Flash has a much longer cooldown than Ignite. So the Lee Sin should be able to come back around for another gank in a couple of seconds, which it looks like he might be doing straight away. No, he's going to go down towards the wraiths. Yeah, and I think uh, Master Yi's looking to come and try and defend this top turret, or at least take away some of the CS to get a little bit of a level advantage. He needs to get some sort of advantage over this Lee Sin right now, because Lee Sin has all of the cards. And actually, uh, it looks like Irelia is, could be caught out here. I'm not sure they'll get a kill. Well, but Lee Sin's coming in from the back for another gank, and it's going to be interesting how this counter gank comes up. Here comes Irelia going in, finds Yi in the bush. Yi goes quite low. Sonic Wave onto the Malphite. Malphite's going to go down. He might still have his exhaust up. He, I think he may have used it in the last fight. There's exhaust gone down. Yi actually gets the first kill there. Yi against Lee Sin, and Yi's going to win this. He's got red buff. Is he going to be able to get that alpha strike? He's still got teleport up, but he hasn't got ghost. Ghost would have helped him so much there. Um, and engage in the middle lane. Ignite's going down from either side. Oriana goes down. Flashes in. I don't know why she flashed there, she was in also attack main, just flashed on top of the Xerath, imagining that Flash did like one true damage or something, like the Trundle Pillar, but it doesn't, so she didn't get it. Yeah, the and Masti having the start that he really needed, he managed to reclaim back that red buff, he's got the full timer on it now that oh, he's Lots of damage coming away. down bot lane, Varus actually getting caught in the strangle roots here, lots of damage, is this Zyra gonna go down, looks like it. she has to flash away, a piercing arrow would get her down, but... The cooldown isn't up, 5 seconds on that. Here comes Yi from behind the teleport gets red buff. There goes the exhaust down. Flash has been used, Alpha Strike's been used as well, and they're not going to be able to get close enough for this. I don't know if Tristana actually has, she hasn't got Rocket Jump up. If she'd had it up there, that would have been a dead Varus. Yeah, Master Yi getting a fairly decent start here. Kind of wastes his teleport, but it does mean he's now got red buff. He has got that first blood advantage, which does mean he can start to snowball with some extra AD. Once he gets that extra AD, his Alpha Strike is going to start doing damage. He's going to start hitting really hard with his auto attacks. And I think that's just one for one in terms of jungler. And also, um, well, it looks like Lee Sin's actually coming up here. Top equilibrium strike goes down the Malfoy. Malfoy actually deadly tanked a tower shot here. Is the Sonic Wave going to hit? Sonic Wave hits! Lots of damage coming in here. That's the rest of the strike. Another equilibrium strike. This is going to be a dead Malfoy. Who's he going to go to? Is Aurelia going to take the kill? Or is Lee Sin going to be a scumbag? Lee Sin using the safeguard. Thought he flashed there for a second. Lee Sin, the scumbag jungler, steals the kill away from Aurelia. Yeah, I really, really could have used that kill to get ahead of the Malphite. However, she's got two assists, she's picked up the longsword, and Malphite has only managed to pick up a piece of cloth armor. She's also got a flask and a couple of potions, so she's going to be sustaining really well here. Malphite has been forced out, and Irelia is going to push this lane up. Uh, Master Yi going back, and um, actually, Lee's first pickup was a sightstone. He's going to be able to start pulling off some crazy safeguard ganks with those ward jumps. So let's hope we see something, because they're always incredibly amazing to watch. Yeah, uh, I mean, the problem with the buying a sightstone first is that now we're watching for it, and if he messes it up, you're darn, darn right I'm going to commentate on the fact that he messed it up. So he better hit some of them, because I'm, I'm looking forward to them now. Yeah, I know. When you buy a sightstone, you are essentially showing your ego as I'm a good Lee Sin player. I can really, really <laughs> hit those good safeguards. However, we're seeing a bit of a CS difference creep out. Oriana is keeping up with CS to the Xerath, even though the Xerath picked up the, f uh, the kill on her. Uh, Varus is actually beating Tristana and CS by 10. So that's a big, big advantage for this Varus. Tristana 
has that good early game, and then she starts to lapse into this mid game. Levels 8 to 13 are really, really poor. And Lisa coming in bot lane just miss, misses that sonic wave. Nice safeguard, but he didn't use a ward, so minus one to the Lee Sen. It really actually doing lots of damage up here. Equilibrium strike going onto this Malphite. Just lots of trades, and it looks like Master Yu is going to come up through the river to try and get a gank on her. She's very overextended. Is this going to be enough damage? I don't know. Lee's actually ganking in the middle lane as well. Lots of trades going in bot lane. Irelia has gone in. Here comes the Yi. Malphite's getting taken down to about half health. Here comes Yi. He's got Highlander. He's got Alpha Strike. He's activated it. Another Alpha Strike. Lots of damage. Is this going to be enough? He hasn't got Ignite. And Irelia is just going to escape from that. Lee Sin came in for the gank but didn't get anything in the middle lane. Actually, no. He bursts out a splash. My mistake. Obviously, he is Insect Reincarnate. And the game has calmed down a little bit, so I'm going to pass over the commentating to you. <laughs> well, let's have a little bit of a recap what we just saw right there. We saw Yi go up top lane for a gank, and he didn't have Ghost. He used Highlander, but Irelia popped Ghost. Maybe he's starting to regret that last Oh, lots of damage comes down to Irelia. It looks like the Ignite's down. Is this going to be enough? Irelia's going so low. Ignite, 20 damage, and the kill! Zerath does so well to get that kill, and he didn't even need his jungler. Yeah, and that's another kill going over to Zara. Just means he can snowball that lane a little bit harder. Actually, what happened is what we saw beforehand. We had the ball delivery system in the middle from that Lee Sing gank. He sonic waved to a minion, but got himself in range of the Zerath so the Orianna could use the shockwave, putting Zerath in a position where he was forced to flash. However, Zerath flashed, stunned the Lee Sin, and got away to turret, leaving no love lost between Zerath escaping with his life. However, the Master Yi. Like I said before, probably regretting that choice of summoner spell now. If he had that ghost, that would have been another kill in his favour. And he didn't make that teleport work the first time. We're going to have to hope he pulls off a pretty good teleport gank next time. Otherwise, that's going to be a wasted summoner. However, in the bot lane, we're seeing Tristana catch up in CS. It's now even Stevens. 54 to 55. And Tristana... Hoping, to, like I was talking about before, she has this lapse in mid game. A level 8 to 13 is where she really, really falls off. She hasn't got the range to be a good AD carry, and all of her skills are AP based. So she has the attack speed steroid, which is okay, but her, um, but her, uh, skills are all mainly based off AP. Other AD carries thrive in the mid game from AD based spells like Graves, like Caitlyn, and everyone else that kind of runs off these AD spells. However, in top lane we've got a bit of a trade going on. Yeah, I mean the trade's been going for a while now. Malphite is actually winning these trades. He's low on mana. Irelia's trying to use that hit and start to get some life back up. Um, there's a Yi coming in. I don't know if this is going to be a good enough gank. He hasn't been seen by any wards. He's going to come in from the side. Malphite's probably just trying to gather up enough mana here to have his unstoppable force up. He needs around 100. There's the 100. Is he going to be able to do anything? Irelia's actually backed off. Zerath coming into this middle lane. It looks like there might be some damage going down, but Oriana actually just uses command attack dissonance and misses. So nothing's really happening. Yi coming in top lane. Is this going to be enough damage? They're coming in. No alpha strike going out and they have to back away because Irelia is just too quick and just gets away from that slippery little woman. Yeah, actually uh, Malphite used his seismic shard which actually took away 70 mana. He, that meant he didn't have enough mana to follow up with his unstoppable force and, and therefore couldn't get enough CC off in time for Yi to get close. However, I think Aurelia may have survived anyway. She's got full mana, she can pull off her Transcendent Blades, and she can pull off her Equilibrium Strike. She is leveling up that Heat and Style. She's level 4 Heat and Style now. Once she hits level 9, she's going to be doing the ultimate bottom for Varus. Oh, lots of damage coming down here from this Varus. It looks like they might be able to get the kill. Lee Sin comes in. Insect Mechanics! Is he going to be able to do it? He goes in, gets that Dragon's Rage kick on the Tristana. Tristana flashes away. It wasn't the best kick in the world. Janna's tanking this tower. She gets tanked one more shot. The Ignite goes down. Another Insect, but he misses the Sonic Wave. And it looks like they're just going to have to back away. The Lee Sin Insect to zero in a matter of around five seconds. Actually, teleport coming in here from Master Yi. I don't know if this is going to be enough damage. He doesn't have anything. Oh, he uses Highlander. He's going to tank the tower. Lots of oh, that's so much damage on the chat against the double kill and escapes with his life. That Master Yi is pro. And like we said, we needed to see a good teleport rank. You just broke the decibel record for your voice right there, Aaron. I've never heard you go that high. Oh, but Lee Sin, he misses the Sonic Wave, isn't going to hit the Master Year. Master Year escapes. Oh, oh, poor you insect. Haven't calmed, you haven't even calmed down yet. You're still hitting that high decibel level. But this is exactly what Master Yi needed. He needed to pull off a good teleport gank. Otherwise, that was a wasted summoner. And he has been making that bot lane, <laughs> that bot lane pay. Wow. 
so much action in the last few minutes. Brilliant, brilliant uh, ward jumps from the Lee Sin. He was really moving through that lane with some vigor. Had to flash to get the dragon kick, but dragon kicked the Tristana into the wall, not back towards his team. Tristana managed to flash out and got away with her life. And and even though that Zyra missed her grasping roots, it didn't matter. A Yi tried to get the kill by running through the turret, but unfortunately knew he was going to take too much turret, 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 turret damage. Wise to back out. And there we go. And we're back to even Stevens again. Everyone acting a bit normal. There is a 2k gold advantage almost in favour of Manchester right now. And they need to get Tristana a couple of kills. Because at the moment, she's going to fall off Varus pretty hard if it gets to that stage. However, Master Yi with three kills. He's picked up a Brutalizer. He's picked up Madred's Razor. And he looks like he's working towards possibly a static shiv with that Brawler's Glove. He's actually coming in for a gank on this bottom lane. Varus has already gone in. He's getting taken quite low. It's about half health. And it looks like they might be able to get enough damage. There's the Buster shot. Lots of damage. Zyra gets the kill. Here comes the Yi. Is he going to be able to get it? He's got the Highlander active on. He hasn't used Alpha Strike yet. Here comes Alpha Strike. And Janna melts before the power of Yi. <laughs> Beautiful play by Zerath in that middle lane, manages to get that kill on Oriana, soloing her. Oh, that's just really well played. Lee Sin actually jumping in bot lane. He's not in sec really, I think we need another name for him. I'm thinking Cricket. What do you think? <laughs> Are Yi actually diving this tower here, tanking it for quite a while, trying to get the Tristana shots off. And Lee Sin is going to go really out low. Scumbag Yi is just trying to escape from this. There come the Strangle Thorns, lots of damage coming down. Lee Sin gets the kill, Insect has revived, but he dies to Tristana, so he's back to being Cricket. <laughs> well, yeah, Lee Sin did kick away uh, Yi into the wall. Again, not getting much distance on his kick. However, he did actually manage to get the shutdown onto the uh, Master Yi. Master Yi is building towards that static shift. He's just built the Avarice Blade. And unfortunately, that's another bit of global gold going towards Manchester in favour. They're now pulling away to a 4k gold advantage. And Tristana has a kill and two assists. That's exactly what she needed to jumpstart her lane. Once she builds that Blade of the Ring King, she'll be ahead of the Varus. She has got... 1,600 gold right now, and she's sitting on a dagger. She can finish that Blade of the Ruin King if she needs to. Zarath is almost at a Deathfire Grasp, I think. I think that's what he's building towards. He has got three kills, and he looks like he's stunning this Oriana. Getting lots, lots of damage down onto this Oriana. She looks like she's going to go down. It's just really nice ult there from uh, Zarath again. Really well played. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant play from the Zerif right there. Hit all of his ultimates exactly where he needed to and got the stun off. Oriana couldn't do anything. He burst through that command protect and did a ton of damage. Really well played there to the Zerif. And Manchester looks like they're doing really, really well. Uh, what, are you, what are you thinking we're going to see now? That Manchester have the advantage. Do you think they're going to start forcing it to a mid-game team, team fight presence? Do you think they're going to start taking these global objectives and forcing 5v5 fights now that they have the advantage? Yeah, I think they are. I mean, and they're probably going to go for the Dragon quite soon. They put a pink ward on that, so it'll be interesting to see when they go for that. I mean, Zerath is three levels ahead of this Oriana now, and he's just dominating that lane, so he can leave his lane for a couple of minutes. Uh, he's 40 CS ahead as well. Get that. We have a bit of action going yeah. on down at Dragon. Looks like um, Tristana's going to go for this Dragon, but she's got taken a little bit low. Yi's coming across as well. Lots of wards. Tristana trying to get rid of that one. yet. Yeah, one more ward goes down. They've got a pink ward, I don't But Janna has warded around the area. It'll be interesting to see if they decide to start this, because Lee is there, and he's, like, I, I mock his mechanics a little bit, but he is 3-1, and one. he's done relatively well, and, yep, here they're going to start it, and Yi is on it, Zyra's off to the side, trying to get some damage down, she's just getting pushed away, Zeref gets a kill on Oriana while they're doing this, sorry that we couldn't catch that on camera, not really much we can do about that, I'm afraid, too much action going on, Yi is going to keep doing this, and Tristana's going to tank it a little bit, here comes Lee Sin, Sonic Wave, doesn't get it, Yi manages to get it, and Lee Sin's going to go down, good attempt there by the Lee, but the Sonic Wave not hitting the Dragon just didn't allow him to get that smite off properly. And we have again carry support, 2-0-3. She's probably going to start building some AP now like she did last time. She's already got that Sight Stone. She's doing serious amounts of damage. Zyra does though, she's one of those supports that can. Looks like there's a bit of action going on in top lane, a bit of a trade going oh, down between yeah. Aurelia and Malphite. Malphite getting lots of damage down on this Aurelia, and Aurelia returning it. I mean, Malphite was near the tower. He's just going to wait. Uh, he's actually going to back away. I was going to say he's going to wait for his shield to come up, back up, and he's going to be able to go back into that. Um, Aurelia getting that hint slow down, an equilibrium strike as well. There's the blade surge. I'm not sure who wins this trade. Malphite doesn't quite have enough mana for his uh, unstoppable force at the moment, and he, that's his only combination. He doesn't have any AP to go with it, so looks like he's going to back away. Yi standing nearby. He's quite low health. Uh, he's actually going to go back as well, so nothing's really going to come of that. 
Yeah, Yi's teleport is actually up at the moment, so it does mean that he can start pulling off those teleport ganks again. He's 4-1-2. He's just built up Yumumu's Ghost Blade. Interesting choice, because I thought he was going to go for the Static Shiv. However, he has built it into Yumumu's Ghost Blade. Uh, decent item, armor penetration that you get from uh, that. Lots of damage good. coming down here on Janna. Janna's going to go down. She flashes away, but it looks like, yeah, Zyra Plant just gets the final shot on her. Um, Zerath just did a lot of that. Sonic Wave going on on Tristana with that Tempest and Cripple. Zerath staying around just to get some extra damage down. He's just so big at the moment. 5-0 and with that needlessly large rods and the Chalice of Harmony. He's going for that Death Eye Grass, as you said. And it looks like actually Aurelia and Zerath are going to meet here. I don't know if Aurelia's going to catch him out. Tristana's just trading a little bit with Lee Sin. Lots of damage coming across the wall there by the Zerath. Here comes Lee Sin just getting his rates but taking a lot of damage. Zerath actually getting jumped on here by Aurelia. Alpha strike there from Yi. Yi's going to get caught by the Hail of Arrows. There's Zerath in his Lotus of Power. Transcendent Race. Nice chain of corruption into his command shot. They've really well played. Tristano is off to the side, killing off this uh, Lee Sin. He looks like he's going to go down just to Tristana by herself. He might be able to get away. I'm not sure if this Lee Sin's going to be able to get away. He safeguards across. Tristana's still following up. He tries to use that Sonic Wave to the Golems, but he missed them. They're actually there at the moment. So Tristana's going up towards the map just to say save, and it looks like Lee's going to come back round. Zerath in the middle lane, taking quite low as well. He's just going to try and protect this tower from the three people who are going to push against it. Yeah, I actually think Zerath is going to build into a, a Fiends and Holy Grail since he's picked up the Chalice of Harmony. He has got 2.5k gold though, and he hasn't been back in quite a while. He's going to hit some serious item thresholds once that he gets back, and I think he probably build, will be building into a ref death cap from the needlessly large rod. I think the reason he picked up the rod is because he was ahead and he wanted to snowball his lane, and he did do a good job of that. That Oriana is considerably behind right now, and he has picked up the Athenians and Holy Grail and the Rabadon's death cup, like I said. Uh, Lucky escape from the Lee Sin, some good mechanics to use his ward jump to get away, force himself away from the Tristana, and that was actually a trade that went in favour of um, Imperial. Uh, however, they are 7k in the deficit at 18 minutes right now. This is a big lead that they need to claw back. We have seen Manchester do well from this sort of deficit before, so Imperial could put out some similar sort of uh, uh, comebacks. However, I just like I said, I think they needed to win their lanes in order to have the, the powerful team fight presence. I think Manchester have the better team fight, and I think that they're going to do better now that they're ahead. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there are minor skirmishes across the map at the moment. Irelia and Malphite just trading a little bit in this top lane. Irelia is going quite deep on this. Use the equilibrium strike. Actually, uses that blade of the Rune King. Or, uh, sorry, yep, blade of the Rune Masi King. Masi is teleporting. Masi off. is teleporting in behind her. Exhaust goes down. Unstoppable force. This Irelia is dead meat. That teleport, he's used that really well twice for those ganks. Tristana actually engaging a little bit in this middle lane. Vara's taken quite low by the Zerat. So it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do from here. They've got rid of Aurelia. They're going to take this top tower. Are they then going to rotate around towards middle? Or they're just going to keep pushing this lane. Yeah, and uh, Zyra has picked up an oracle. She's looking to get that map, uh, that vision on the map, and take away the vision of Imperial. Uh, as I said, now that uh, Zerath has hit those thresholds, he's going to be hitting hard with his Arcane Pulse, and his Arcane Barrage should be doing close to about a quarter oh, of that. Oh, a huge amount of damage health. coming out there from Zerath, that people just chasing him, and he's just locus of power using that Arcane Pulse and just doing like a quarter of Janna's health right there in one while, shot. While this has been going on, uh, Master and Malphite took the inner turret of the top lane. They pushed all the way through, and no one came to stop them. That's another chunk of global gold going in favour of Ma uh, Manchester, and now they're 10k gold ahead at 20. Oh, lots of damage coming out to Varus. It looks like he's going to die. Oh, he flashes, but there's a nice rocket jump into Buster shot there from Tristana, and they're going to get this middle second turret as well. This is just... Manchester just taking their advantage. Yi actually jumping in, Alpha striking onto this Oriana. Oriana tried to dodge the Arcane Opposite. Sonic Wave comes out, Strangle Thorns as well. Safeguard onto her Ignite there. Is she going to go down to the Ignite? Protect just misses. She's not able to get it onto her in time, so she goes down to the Ignite there from Zyra. Lots of damage coming down to Aurelia. Really bad pathing there using Transcendent Blades, but she's going to go down to Tristana. And there's just so much damage coming out from this Zerath Tristana combination. They might even get this inhibitor turret. Right now, Manchester are basically 3v5ing Imperial's team. Imperial are running at them one at a time. There's nothing they can do about it. And, and for, oh, my, I think they tried, Mr. Uh, Lee tried to get off uh, engaged there as the Tristana was tanking the turret a little bit. Malphite and Yi have been out of the fight for a long time. Malphite has got Actually, Malphite coming right in now. from the side here. Lots of damage coming down from the Malphite. 
doesn't use his unstoppable forces on the Lee Sin as he knows Lee can jump away. So we'll have to see whether they decide just to push this mid lane now. Actually, lots of damage coming down from the Arcane Barrage. Oriana taking down to around a quarter of her HP, uses that command protect, but they're pinging back. Lee Sin trying to flank them, but he's only on half health as well. They could probably take this fight if they really wanted. Arcane Barrage has got less than a minute cooldown with the current cooldown reduction that Zareth has. This means that he could be throwing this out every minute and doing a chunk of damage. And this is why Zareth is such a good sieger. With that um, Locus of Power, he can throw out a massive range with his spells. And he is one of the best AP siegers in the game. Dragon is up now and Tristana is starting it. And it looks and like Masti can just do it has... by herself at the moment, can't yeah. she really? Like Masti has enough. just picked up. Masti has just picked up a BF sword. Uh, Zareth is sitting on 1600 gold. He could probably go back and buy another. Malfoy's actually large gonna rod. get engaged upon in this top lane. He's tried to steal this blue. There's five people here and there's a pause. This is the worst time for a pause that I have seen recently. It looks like there is possibly some sort of uh, problems with the Manchester team. Someone may have disconnected. Uh, unsure what they're attempting here. <laughs> Malphite isn't the problem though, as he has just talked in chat, but Malphite has been engaged upon by the entirety of Imperial team. I'm not sure that this will result in anything crazy. Uh, they may look to go for a Baron of Hate, but it looks like Master Yi has disconnected. We actually have and the he... uh, Howling Gale sound just playing over and over again at the moment because um, there's a Howling Gale going out at the moment. So I apologise for that on the stream. Like We can't really do it until we can't really change anything until we're able to get away from this pause. Yeah, and we're just having Master Yi restart his client. We should be back into the game pretty shortly. I don't know how Imperial are going to get back from this. It's 22 minutes and there is 13k between the two teams. We haven't seen a team claw back and a win from this kind of disadvantage throughout the entire tournament. Manchester came very close last game against ACOG, but we haven't seen anyone else do that much with it. So... What do you think that Manchester need to do to confirm their win? Or what do you think Imperial need to do to try and get back into it? Um, I think Manchester just need to do what they're doing. Let Master Yi split push a little bit. His teleport's up in... It's a while away, it's around 150 seconds, but he can split push and they can just win the game without him, really. They've got enough in the rest of his team. It looks like we've got the reconnect in here, so we should be able to get back into this game anytime soon. Um, It'll be interesting to see whether Imperial can actually get back into the game. They are that far behind. They need to just start picking off people. If they pick off this Malphite, that's a start. Like, he's not on a killing spree or anything, but it's a kill. And a kill is a kill for them at the moment. They're that far behind. And we're just about to get back into the game, so we should get ready to cast this Malphite. Actually getting engaged upon the Hound Girl, uses the Unstoppable Force, trying to get away. Also uses his Flash. Uses that seismic shard there on Aurelia. He's going to get away to his tower. And they didn't even manage to pick up that kill. I think I might have Sound muted. So we're going to turn sound back on. Sorry about that, guys. And uh, wow. yeah, didn't even manage to pick up the kill on Malphite. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, <laughs> Imperial are going to be happy about oh, that. Oh, Irelia has actually started Baron here. There, I mean, there's a push in bot lane. Here comes Zarya from the side. It's only Zarya. Zarya's actually coming from the other side. If they're able to get this properly, lots of damage coming down from Arcana Pulse. Picks off the Varus so beautifully. Uh, there was a monsoon there, and there's a two man push in bot lane as well. Zareth, Zarya and Zareth are chasing up here. They're pushing on the inhibitor. Looks like the Janna might go down. Nice Howling Gale there, but Tristan is going to get this inhibitor. Lee Sin is still there. Explosive shot goes out onto him. Zareth is chasing down in the top side of the map. So difficult to see everything that's going on. Almost gets the Janna, doesn't quite get it with those mace chains and the Arcane Pulse combination. Tristano is pushing this bottom lane still, but Oriana's there to back it up. Zyro is pushing the middle lane by herself. Here's Zara just clearing out those waves. It looks like they might get a middle lane turret as well. Here comes Tristano from the side to get that. And there's just so much advantage for Manchester from a Malphite getting caught. Like, their team got caught and they took Two turrets, almost took an inhibitor. Lee Sin going a nice buster strategy right there to knock him into the wall. Looks like he's going to engage. Zareth might go down here. Zareth gets a kill on the Lee Sin. Irelia gets a kill on Zareth. Irelia just still alive. Tristana manages to get it. She gets a kill on Zyra. Tristana's going to back out. Zyra actually got the kill there on Irelia. Unstoppable Force comes in. And this combo beats the combo they're facing here. <coughs> Sorry, Varus trying to escape him, uses the Blade of the Rune King active on that Malphite. And then, meanwhile, like, Yi's just like, oh, I'll just take this red buff, man. Like, I'll just do this yeah, by myself. Yeah, and his, um, his, his um, <laughs> teleport is coming out pretty soon. He could do a random 
teleport split push whenever he felt feels like it he hasn't really built his bf sword or his zeal into anything yet tristana is sitting on 1400 gold that was a brilliant set of fights for manchester it has further pushed their gold lead they are nearing a devastating 15k gold lead and drag and baron is still up tristana just rocking jumping out of the way doesn't want to get caught by the oriana this is 6 to 21 this is a very very one-sided match right now i don't like to say when i think things are done but i think it might be done for imperial right now they've got two inhibitor turrets open all it needs is for manchester to group up and force those inhibitors i don't think imperial will let them go and i think that'll be a fight that will end the game master yi just heading back um just heading to, to group up with his team, sorry, Tristana has now just picked up a chain vest. She has got part of her Infinity Edge and a chain vest. Uh, she is 407. She's going to be a very, very uh, devastating Yordle right now. A tiny little rat-sized pocket full of power. Zarath, he has picked up his Void Staff. Good luck building Magic Resist versus that because he is going to be hurting like hell. Mas um... The rest of uh, Imperial, however, are looking a bit thin on the ground. They don't really have much. Oriana, 063. She's only got that Athenes. There are two major items ahead for the Zarath right now. And, but it does look like Imperial are trying to group up into a 5. They're going to have to try and catch people out here. I don't think a 5v5 team fight will go in their favour in Looks like actually the Zyber might get called out. Oh, at least in trying the insect mechanics, but... The flash there from Zyra just not managing to allow him to drag his rage up back into the team. Oh, Oriana getting caught out here by the Zerath. Is he going to be able to get this kill? Use the locus of power. Dissonance slows him down. Nice snipe there by the Zerath across the wall into blind area. He wasn't able to see where that Oriana went. She used to protect on herself. And Tristana and Yi are going to start off this Baron. Yeah, they're pinging Baron. They know that the Oriana's dead. Oriana is one of the biggest uh, team fight presences that Imperial had. The fact that she's 073 means that they just can't team fight properly. Varus also has nothing. Janna also has nothing. I mean, not many carries on the side of uh, Imperial are doing well. I oh, really. Zerath's actually going to meet this Lee Sin here, getting lots of damage, taking about half his health in a couple of spells, uses Locus of Power, but he's warded there. The Baron goes down in the meantime, and basically that was Zerath just being like, oh, split push, and they just took the Baron in the background. Yeah, and they just, they could have probably two manned it with Master Yi and Tristana. Master Yi has now picked up that static shiv. He will be bursting people like crazy. Alpha strike into auto attack. Wow. And Zerath is extremely fed right now. He is sitting on another 1400 gold. So is Tristana. Tristana will probably be looking out to finish that Infinity Edge soon. She just has finished that Infinity Edge just as I spoke. And they have two. And Malphite is getting really tanky. He has got with a lot of farm, he hasn't been involved in many kills, so his unstoppable force probably hasn't even done that much in this game, but it hasn't needed to. They've had Zerath single-handedly win his lane. Bot lane was crushed. Zyra is 5-1-7. She has built her Leandri. Sonic Wave actually hitting here on Zerath. Gets the insect mechanics Dragon Race. Dissonance comes off by the Oriana. Chain of Corruption. Zerath almost getting a kill. There's the command Shockwave. He's going to kill this Le Oh, Lee sends Shockwave's in just to deny that kill. But that was 5-1-1. On one. Zerath was just split pushing by himself. I think if Tristana, Zyra, Yi and Malphite group up, they can take this team. They haven't got ults anymore. Oh, yeah, down. all of the ults are burnt on killing that uh, that Zerath. Uh, but Zerath is one of the main par par portions of the uh, Manchester team's damage. However, everyone on uh, Manchester is pretty fed. Yi does a lot of damage, so does Tristana. So there's no way that they should count them out in a 4v5. In fact, with the Malphite ultimate and with all of the ultimates being in favour of Manchester, I really wouldn't be surprised to see them completely devastate a 4v5 engage right here. Uh, it looks but. like they're just trying to paint this by numbers, making sure... Oh, Sonic Wave actually coming in there from the Lee Sin. That was really not intelligent. Unstoppable Force knocks him up. Here comes Yi. Alpha Strike in Highlanders on. Yi gets the first reset. Alpha Strike. About half of Irelia's health there. Another Alpha Strike. Oriana's dead. Tristana. Rocket jump. Rocket jump. Rocket jump. Is this going to be enough damage on this Varus? Tristana flashes away. Triple kill for Tristana. Two kills for the Yi. And that is GG. Yeah, this is Manchester just completely dominating this game. They obviously want to go back to ACOG in the final, and we are going to see a rematch. ACOG versus Manchester in the final. Manchester, however, have to win two games in a row. Or two, yeah, two out of the... Uh, yeah, two games in a row, actually. If, if Manchester have to win two games in a row to win the entire tournament, whereas ACOG only have to win one. <sighs> there we are. There Crazy. we are. I credit Crazy. where it's due. Imperial did really well to get this far in the competition, but... They just 
were outplayed in that match, just outmatched by the Manchester team who have played well throughout the tournament, really. Uh, it'll be interesting yeah. to see how they manage to play against ACOG because they do have to win those two games in a row, but they are on a winning streak at the moment where they, they won that game, so hopefully they can carry this cross into the next game. Yeah, if they play like they did here against ACOG, they will have a tough time beating them. However, ACOG have looked strong all tournament. They have not dropped one match. That is why they are the winner's bracket finalists. Manchester, having only dropped one, came in and steamrolled the fifth seed Imperial. This is a first versus second seed grand final. It is a repeat of last tournament's final. We are going to see who takes this away. Manchester have to win two. ACOG only have to win one. However, this is going to be really, really intense. If you want to get involved with this and follow the rest of the updates, guys, we're at facebook.com forward slash the Newell UK. We're at Twitter at the Newell. You can go to our website, the Newell.com, for all of the information regarding the upcoming University Esports League format that we're running. And if any, all the information, including brackets on this tournament, we're the Newell.com forward slash preseason friendlies too. I am a scoundrel, the bumbering fool, and my extremely fast talking co caster, Sonar, is with me. We'll be back in five to ten minutes.